cyber attacks happening all over the world, the protection your phone needs to keep your information safe. We gotta come together and work together to keep a safer Kansas City. Homicides are an ongoing problem in Kansas City. Mothers in the community are calling for change. The decade of work they put in to stop violence. And stories from a celebrity on the fields called the sod father one of the greatest of all time for his work in the NFL. Leading the way in Kansas and Missouri, you're watching KNBC 9 News. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Cameron McCrory. And I'm Maddie Terrell. Welcome to the class of 2024 KNBC 9 intern show. We are just two of the six interns this summer. For the past 10 weeks, our class has been getting experience in reporting, producing, directing, anchoring, digital and creative services. Please continue watching to see everyone's hard work. Over the summer, cyber attacks have been on the rise. We're here in the studio with our intern, Praji Ghosh, who is keeping you and your data safe. Yes, absolutely. We use our cell phone devices almost ev for almost everything, but your data may not be safe as hacks have been rising all year. On today's Consumer Reports, we're sharing ways you can keep your information safe. According to Verizon, over 30,000 cyber attacks happened just this year. Any account you, you have can be hacked, and this helps hackers get into your devices. Experts say you need to be careful of what you put on your cell phone. Every single app you download, uh, you should seriously consider not downloading because every one that you download, you're increasing the threat surface, the number of opportunities that an individual has to hack you. Other ways to avoid hacks are being cautious about what you're texting, don't store passwords on your cell phone devices for important accounts, and turning off your microphone and location features on apps. And if you want some extra steps to prevent hacks, uh, experts say extra, extra protection on accounts with face identification or opt-in to authentication factor and use a VPN to hide your connection to public Wi-Fi. Last year, Kansas Cityans voted to raise police funding. Now they have the chance to vote on it again. Missouri Governor Mike Parson proposed a raise to the city's minimum spending on KCPD to 25%. The Missouri Supreme Court overturned the first one, claiming the ballot purposely confused voters. It is now back on the ballot as the same question with different language. Missouri voting is on August 6th. You can check sos.mo.gov for polling information. And on the Kansas side, Kansas City, Kansas police are teaming up with local faith leaders to address gun violence in their area. This new initiative is aimed at building trust and bridging a gap. KCKPD believes faith leaders are the cornerstone to each community and that some people may not feel comfortable talking to police directly, but they may feel at ease speaking with a pastor about issues. By faith, we can do anything. If we believe that it will have an effect, a positive effect, then it will have a positive effect. It's up to us to keep it going and to keep it sustained right now. A lot of people are skeptical of the police with all of the social media things that are going on and so forth. All faith and community leaders in Kansas are invited to join this initiative. Weekly meetings are every Wednesday at their headquarters. And a local violence prevention group is also working toward a safer Kansas City. They took to the streets in response to recent homicides. Those are the sounds of KC mothers in charge calling on the community to stand up against gun violence. Just out of control. At the corner of 55th and Prospect, handing out flyers and telling drivers like your horn! to send a message that enough is enough. We're tired of the violence. Violence has to stop. Temple said this violence starts with the very members of the community. It's people. It's a community problem. We are allowing these people to cause harm in our community. And that it's their responsibility to speak up. Let's go. Work your arm. And make it a safer place. Saying something when they see something, when they know something, when they hear something. Start doing something. Come out and be a part. She said that safety begins with local legislation. We know we have a problem. We know we got to get out and vote. We got to change the gun, uh, the gun laws. But it doesn't stop there. She said they must also confront the mental health crisis. Trauma, the people don't deal with conflict. 
So we got to come together and work together to keep us safer in Kansas City. A mission they will continue to lead. Mothers in Charge is made up of women who have been personally affected by gun violence. And if you'd like to learn more about them, visit kcmothersincharge.org. The Kansas City Parade of Hearts takes over each summer as local artists display the parts they love about the city. That's right, more than 100 hearts are spreading love across the metro, including in Leawood, Kansas. This entry in the Parade of Hearts public art project is called Will You KC Me? And the artists say they wanted to create a space to celebrate love of all forms. They hope that you interact with their heart to honor your own love story. This heart is on display outside the Shake Shack on 119th and Rosewood Drive until mid-August. Kansas City is known as the city of fountains, but today some of them are running dry. Even the popular J.C. Nichols Fountain hasn't been on all summer. Maintenance and vandalism are keeping them off. The Volker Fountain near the plaza was subject to the damage. The City of Fountains Foundation believes someone wants to sell its parts for money, but they don't have the money to fix it. A very important sculpture that was fabricated uh, by Carl Millis outside of Stockholm, Sweden makes it pretty unique, uh, and so when you do damage to that, you don't have the parts to do that. If you want to help them maintain the fountains, go to their website at cityoffountainsfoundations.org and hit donate. 2024 is an unprecedented election year after President Joe Biden announced he will not be running for re-election. The Democratic Party is now under a quick deadline to choose a new nominee before their national convention in Chicago in just a few weeks. Right now, Vice President Kamala Harris is the leading nominee backed by the majority of party delegates. KMBC 9 spoke to local Democratic officials who say this is the energy the party needed. There's new people reaching out. They want to knock. They want signs already. You know, they want to be out there uh, supporting whoever the nominee is. But it, it does certainly seem like things are, are moving towards Vice President Harris. Delegates will conduct a virtual vote later this week to select their nominee, and if selected, Harris will have until August 7 to select her running mate. On the other side of the ticket, the Republican Party has locked in their nominees at their national convention in July. There, former President Trump accepted his party's nomination and announced Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his running mate. Kansas Senator Eric Schmidt was at the convention and said he's excited for what Vance brings to the table. He can speak on those issues with a lot of credibility. Uh, when you talk about the challenges that whether it's of addiction or or just, you know, jobs being shipped overseas. I mean, J.D.'s lived that life. And Election coverage all the way until November 5th. For those updates, you can download our app and turn on notifications for Commitment 2024. Women in politics are taking center stage at the Emmys. A Kansas City native is up for several nominations. Something in the air, and it's politics. Casey native Toshi Hekina is one of the girls featured in the documentary Girls State, which was filmed at the 2022 Missouri American Legion Auxiliary Girls State Session. It's a week-long program that brings hundreds of girls together to build a government from the ground up. The movie is up for three Emmys, and you can watch it now on Apple TV Plus with a subscription. For 80 years, George Toma has been paving the way to become known as one of the greatest groundskeepers of all time. His works in stadiums and ballparks across the world have landed him this title, and he's worked right here in Kansas City at Arrowhead and Kauffman Stadium. This summer, he released a book sharing his experience. 95-year-old George Toma has put pen to paper documenting his life's work. It was unbelievable. Widely known as the greatest groundkeeper of all time, Toma has earned the name the Sodfather. Over the hill. Toma, however, views himself differently. Actually, I'm just George P. Toma, the nitty gritty dirt man. His work on some of the most famous sporting events has taken him across the world. You know, going over to Japan and uh, going to Mexico and London and Berlin and Barcelona. With a career spanning over 80 years, he shares his advice. My motto is, uh, do the job and then do that extra. From humble beginnings, this book highlights decades of hard work, among other stories. And I can congratulate some people. And in turn. And I take some good punches at some people. 
punch is deemed worthy by Toma as he believes. The cheapest insurance for an athlete from preschool to the professional level is a safe play field. From the tallest fan Put your finger and hold a ring like that. to the smallest fan he made every signing experience as detailed and impressive as his work on fields. The Sod Father's book is available as of June and you can find it on Amazon. That's right, the book is available wherever you can get your books or on Amazon. Coming up on KBC9 Sports, a recap of Chiefs training camp and how they're working on a hopeful three-peat. Plus this summer, some new record holders in Major League Baseball and how the organization is rewriting history. Welcome to KMBC 9 Sports. I'm Maddie Terrell, the intern anchoring on events happening at the Truman Sports Complex all the way over to Children's Mercy Park. Today, starting off in St. Joseph at Chiefs Training Camp. Chiefs Training Camp is heating up in all senses of the word. Thank you. Players are on site in St. Joseph putting in work as they won't settle for two back-to-back -back Super Bowls. They want the three-peat. Being satisfied, this is my mindset. Just coming into this thing, uh, to this 2020, what, four or five camp, uh, being unsatisfied and knowing there's a goal, we have to reach it. This is the first time the whole team is together with the new additions. Additions like Xavier Worthy, who holds the fastest 40 yard dash for the NFL Combine. Oh, I know. But the offense isn't the only side getting to work. Both sides challenging each other, uh, which means you're going to have a proven, right? And players buy into Andy Reid's coaching. Whatever coach allows us to do, uh, we're going to be those type of players. And that's what it's all about, being on the field and, and, and being able to do whatever coach uh, wants you to do. While all eyes are on the prize, players like Creed Humphrey believe the key is... Just taking it day by day and getting better every day. And things will continue ramping up as pads come on and contact starts later this week. A piece of Kansas City history affected the major leagues in May. The MLB has merged their records with the Negro Leagues, making all new record holders, which is almost 100 years overdue. Now Negro League players are taking over the charts. This change made baseball legend John Gibson the all-time leader in batting average, slugging percentage, and much more. I want everyone else to know that they were major leaguers. No doubt about it, they were just in a league because they wouldn't let them in they're a National American League, but they didn't make them any less of a player. Also adds better statistics for Kansas City legends. Satchel Page, who pitched for the Kansas City Monarchs, now has over 100 more career wins. And Jackie Robinson got a big update to his career hits. More than 3,000 players have been added into the MLB. The Royals are in first place in their third place in their division and currently hold the third and final American League wild card. Here are the current American League Central standings. The Cleveland Guardians are on top with 64 wins. The Minnesota Twins tie with the Royals with 58 wins. The Royals are just one game ahead of the Boston Red Sox in the race for the final American League wildcard spot, which sets up an important series coming up next week when the Red Sox visit Kansas City. The Kansas City Current is leading the way to help people in the LGBTQ plus community. The team presented a check to Saves Pride Haven. The organization helps provide permanent and emergency housing to Kansas City's most vulnerable. The money came from the Currents Pride Month fundraising. It means everything to us. We can't do it without the community. Uh, we work day in and day out on these challenges and we need the community to continue to put wind in our sails. The Current are now heading to the Women's Cup semifinal. You can find all the Current's coverage you need on KMBC.com sports or search Casey Current. The Current is now in second place with a record of 10 wins, 5 draws and 1 loss, just behind the Orlando Pride. Both teams were undefeated until the Current fell to the, June, to the Pride in June. The Current, however, is unbeaten in the National Women's Soccer League X Ligma MX Feminal Summer Cup after winning 3-0 against Pachuca. Two goals were scored by midfielders Bina and one by forward Kristen Hamilton. There is still a large remainder of the season left which will end with the WNSL Soccer Championship right here in Kansas City at the CPKC Stadium. 
Over at Children's Mercy Park, Sporting Kansas City has had a rough season, sitting at 12 out of 14 in the Western Conference. They have double digits in losses. They had a comeback win against Chicago FC Fire on Sunday. Defender Robert Castellanos answered back to Chicago with a goal right before halftime, and forward Willie Agata hit a strong header in the 76th minute to secure the win for Sporting. They play next Monday on August 5th at 8 p.m. This summer has been very good for our Kansas City sports teams, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for this fall to see what more sports bring us then. But unfortunately, we've now reached the end of our intern show. We want to thank our amazing producer and director back there in the booth, Amaya Morgan and Azaria Pishney. Thank you, Amaya and Azaria. This show would not be possible without you. And we want to thank you for watching. Goodbye and have a wonderful rest of your day.